to the DK Daily Trot. I'm Jason Gilboa, Jake Gilboa 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at the Sunday slate here over here on DraftKings, the main one, uh, the 12 gamer. And uh, looks like it could be some weather. Um, but overall, I mean, it doesn't look like any potential postponed risk, but still pitchers is kind of crucial. Yeah, um, it's currently raining outside my place, so I might be in a weather delay as well today. We'll see how it plays out for me, but um, yeah, look, I don't know how my arm's going to, you know, um, my elbow, get a little tendonitis um, <laughs> when, you know, when it gets a little humid out there. So for those of you with tendonitis, you know what I'm talking about. It might be a little tough to get warmed up today. Yeah, I mean, that's an issue. I mean, another one of the Western Mass studs on this slate is, you know, mm. possibly in a, in a situation to avoid. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're, we're pretty much always in a situation to avoid, but yeah, for this one especially. <laughs> uh, looking at the pitchers here, though, and um, uh, for me, Jake Garrietta kind of comes in as my, my tier one guy. Uh, a little bit cheaper than Jose Fernandez. Uh, obviously, I mean... You know, Ariad has a tougher matchup than Fernandez, but you look at the the win, um, Vegas wise, minus two ninety five. Um, Ariad has been very tough on right handers, one eighty six Woba allowed this season. He just kind of stands out as still the elite option there. Yeah, um, dominant against against righties, and then you you kind of look look down the line at this Diamondbacks lineup and twenty one point seven K percentage already this year and. Uh, they're just kind of an average offense so far, and especially with Goldschmidt kind of not fully becoming himself right now. Um, so high-end option, over se- over seven Ks in four of his last five outings. So I think you're looking at Arietta as a pretty strong cash option. Yeah, definitely. And I don't have a problem spinning up to Fernandez. I mean, you kind of look at that Mets lineup. Um in one, I mean, there's no David Wright. Uh, Cespedes was scratched yesterday, so he could be seeing a pretty weak uh, lineup one through nine. And not that the Mets mm-hmm. have really been strong this season, so uh, I kind of continue his strike rate right to to come up um, or to kind of stay the same. But kind of looking at the price tag, uh, I just kind of spin down Arietta a little bit more in cash. Yeah, um, Fernandez obviously high upside. I mean, he's been dominant over the last month or so, uh, pretty much every start. So I, you can't really beat thirty DK points a game at least. Um, but yeah, pretty good matchup. He's just expensive, but we've kind of come to that's kind of become normal here. So um, I'm okay with that. Probably just go Arietta and cash though. So. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, definitely am. Um, kind of in that same range. I mean, I, I wish Justin Verlander was a little bit cheaper, but I don't hate that matchup there. Um, I mean, he's been very solid this month. Two thirty Wobo out to hitters in, in the month of May. Um, the strikeout rate seems to be back from his you know kind of previous years, twenty six point five. And this White Sox offense, I mean, nothing to really rave about. And the only disappointing thing is that you got Quintana, who's another quality arm on the other side. So a win isn't yeah. as certain here. And Quintana's a guy that might go under owned and I think is totally just a tournament play. Um, but I actually think he's kind of intriguing. Um, the Dodgers are, or not the Dodgers, sorry. The Tigers are a good offense, but um, I, I could see him doing well against these righties. So um, I, I actually think he's an interesting contrarian tournament play. I, in terms of Verlander, I do think he has that strikeout upside, um, and obviously the White Sox are a little weaker. So I, I actually I don't mind that price, but it is a little expensive. And if you're already there, it's kind of like why not just bump it up to yeah. Arietta. So um, that's kind of how I'm looking at that range. But yeah, I actually I actually don't mind either of those, but I, I just prefer even at the higher prices Arietta. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. That's the thing I wish was kind of more of a difference between Verlander and that top tier. Yeah. But uh, kind of staying in that same range, Aaron Noll is a guy I like a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, his ground ball rate, nearly 55%, 27% strikeout rate. You look at this Milwaukee team, I mean, bottom half in Woba against righties. Uh, They also have the the highest strikeout rate, 26% uh, against right-handers this season. So I think this is something that that Noll can kind of – 
deliver a high upside game in. And you look at the Phillies, I mean, decent favorites there. You got Willie Peralta on the other side, who's really not a good pitcher. You expect some run support. Uh, and I think he's kind of a, a decent option in, in all formats there if you did want to spin down a little bit. Yeah, he's he's the the one guy tonight where you just go through everything in the matchup and you're like, check, 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 check. And it's like, okay, he's got it all. There we go. Um, the only concern is – I know there was weather concerns last night. Um, is that still a factor or does it look like that game's cleared up? It is. Uh, I mean, checking the site, it didn't seem to be any postponement, right? But, I mean, it might be a late start. Um, so hopefully yeah. they do get that figured. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's a good call. I mean, weather-wise, he might be the one that, you know, that could be in a delay. But it also might push his ownership a little bit lower. Um, but right. as long as they manage that game, you know, the right way, it should be okay. Yeah, I think he's worth it, though. And he's definitely um, a better option than Quintana in that range. So that's kind of how you're looking at that. Um, just keep an eye on the weather. But I think he should be a really solid option today. Yeah, definitely. Um, kind of spinning down here, uh, looking at some cheaper guys. I mean, Garrett Cole, Matt Harvey, both sit in a range of kind of an SP2 option for me. Uh, you know, really in all formats. I mean, Garrett Cole's kind of heavier win favorite, so you like that. Harvey not ne- might not necessarily get a win, but at those prices, I mean, he doesn't really have to if he can manage uh, a decent quality start uh, mm-hmm. and some strikeouts. And you look at this Marlins team, I mean, they haven't been good of late. Uh, that Harvey, you know, looked like his old self last game, and at that price, I'm, I'm willing to roll the dice yet again. Yeah, I think we're willing to jump um, off of this early season sample because of that last game. Uh, it's kind of like, okay, he showed his real face or, or what we've come to know of him the last few years. So maybe we can throw this sample out the window. Um, and I think that that might be a good idea and maybe get you ahead for this, this at least this start. Because if he has another one in a row, then people will probably be on him. But this this might be a good a good night to attack him. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, you want to take advantage of the price tag while it's there. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's going to be pretty soon where he's going to be up over 9K. And um, as far as team, I mean, it's not the obvious matchup, but they're not that strong. I mean, a lot of guys were overachieving at the beginning of the season, guys like Dietrich and Prado. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you got, you know, guys slumping in the middle like Stanton. Um, so I think Harvey can kind of work around this team and, and pitch a pretty good start. Yeah, um, a little more expensive, but I'm looking at Lance McCullers, 24 strikeouts in his last three outings. Um, pretty strong, strong favorite. Um, and against this A's team that's kind of struggled this year, 23rd in Woba against right-handed pitching in 2016 and 22nd in Woba. Oop, ISO, I mean. So uh, they're just not that strong of an offense. So I, I kind of like this matchup for McCullers. Yeah, I do too. I mean, uh, I, I am expecting kind of Houston to pull out a win there, and I think at that price, uh, it's not that bad of an option because like, I kind of prefer him over a Tanner Rourke or a Drew Smiley. Um, just a little bit easier match or, matchup, um, and, and I think he does have that strikeout upset, even though the A's don't strike out a, a ton, but I think 5-plus is still reasonable for him. Yeah, and um, I mean, he's he's in a different, like, bracket then and tier than the Harvey of the world. So I think that's that's a big enough difference to where the roster construction doesn't really coincide. Um so I, I think it's either a Harvey or or you're looking up, you know, so I don't I don't really think you're making that decision between them. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh anyone else you're looking at here? Um Scott Casimir. He's, he's a pretty solid option. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, getting the Braves. Um, if you're playing that later slate, I mean, he's kind of that clear-cut number one guy. Because, uh, I mean, we've seen what the Braves do against lefties, and it's not pretty. Right. Uh, looking at catcher here, and um, it's a spot where you might be looking to pay down again. Um, and, and there's a lot of guys here up top that, that aren't in the best best spots. I mean, Russell Martin hasn't been that great against a lefty. Rodriguez, uh, Luke Roy against Noel is kind of tough. Uh, I, I like Wilson Ramos. I like this Washington offense uh, if I'm paying all the way up. Um, but I think it's kind of wise to just maybe stick down. And Chris Iannetta is a guy I'm looking at, 3,500. 
Uh, this hit lefties well. I, I like this Mariners team again for offense. Uh, Holland, 329 will be allowed to righty since 2014, and I know it just has that strong track record. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Um, when you're, He's kind of been the value. He's been popping up in the optimizer. He's kind of been a value for the last few days now, and he's been paying off. So keep going to that well. And, yeah, as you mentioned with Holland, um, lefty-righty splits for, for Ionetta. He's got a solid chance there for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, these Philly bats are, I mean, all in play for me today. Uh, you look at Willie Peralton, he's been horrible. Um, I mean, been bad against lefties, he's been bad against righties. A guy like Cameron Rupp at 3K, uh, not a bad at punt option. I think for a lot of these Philly bats I'll, you know, we'll touch on just because uh, really points per dollar wise, they could be one of those sneakier stacks on the slate. Yeah, definitely. Um, and again, I think tonight is another night where you pay down and sort of look at some of those cheaper options. Um, I think you always kind of look at that Red Sox lineup and whoever they're throwing out there at catcher. I think they have a pretty decent matchup tonight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, there's some guys that you can kind of look at lower. I'm curious to see some lineup spots. Um, y- you know, uh, you were looking at kind of a Texas game. Uh, as far as offense goes, and I think whoever they roll out on the Texas side, I mean, you were kind of looking at Brian Holiday last night. He would become really another punt option. I mean, he's been decent even in the bottom of the lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a good call there. He he didn't necessarily hit the home run I was looking for last night, but uh, I, I'll take I'll take his production for, for what he costs, you know? Yeah. Uh, one guy I might take a shot on, I'm – I mean, we know we talked about McCullers uh, quite a bit. Is Stephen Vogue about 3,300? 3, uh, hitting over 330 in the last 10 games. And, um, I mean, he's a guy with a solid track record. I like the ballpark. Much more of a kind of a GPP play, I guess, uh, just because McCullers has been tough. But um, there's a lot to like still about Vogue there. Yeah, and he's been batting in a nice spot in the lineup. But, again, if you if you're off McCullers or sort of switching up tournament lineups for sure, yeah, definitely like vote. Yeah, anyone else you like? I mean, if you're paying up, are you are you still kind of looking at Ramos there? If he's in the lineup, yeah, I I think Ramos is is the guy if he's in there. Um, but I, I like paying down. I think that's been a pretty successful strategy so far this year. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, first base here. Yeah. I mean, once again, if you want that consistent production, for me, it's still paying up for David Ortiz, but a little bit tougher on the slate. But, I mean, obviously, Estrada's been fairly solid against lefties. But, I mean, if you look, Ortiz is just dialed in. Uh, 492 Wobb off right use this season, 428 ISO. Um, Estrada, 1.40 home runs for nine to lefties since 2014. So, uh, if you're looking for some home run upside, I think Ortiz is there. And I mean, cash game-wise, he's just been – close to a sure thing i mean each time he each time he plays yeah he's he hasn't been going up against many aces this this last streak here but i mean he's been uh, automatic so um the price hurts especially if you're paying up but if you have one of those mid-range options in there in terms of pitching i think you might be able to fit him in and obviously He's the cornerstone of any Red Sox stack. So, sorry, Hanley. Uh, you're out again. <laughs> uh, looking a little bit cheaper. I mean, two guys that I, I like a little bit more as far as the cash game value go, uh, Anthony Rizzo and Edwin Encarnacion, 45 and 4,300. Uh, I love this Cubs offense today going up against Corbin. Uh, Rizzo hit lefties very, very well last year. Uh, and he's kind of at a, at a price tag that, that won't last long just because he's starting to heat up again. Uh, and it was about time because, I mean, he was rather unlucky. Um, yeah. Rizzo's- there, there was quite quite a streak there where he just wasn't doing anything, but, I mean, he's finally coming back to um, what we expect him to be, and that's home run power every night. So, yeah, again, him, him and uh, Bryant, I, I like throwing both of them in there today for sure. Yeah, definitely. And kind of 4,300, I mean – Eduardo Rodriguez has shown some some uh, flashes of being a solid pitcher, but overall, I mean, a lot of right-handed bats in this line of Encarnacion at this price tag is one of them. Uh, I mean, they have a 5.5 Vegas run total. So, uh, you know, Edwin, 409 Wolba against lefties this year, 280. So I think at that price, you can kind of come down and feel pretty good about it. Yep, definitely agree there. Um, it's... Again, Toronto, you, they're more of one-offs at this point because um, 
one of them will go off every night, but we just – it's a little random. But, yeah, I like his spot in the lineup. I like his matchup, and, and he works at his price. So, yeah, definitely in on that. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking cheaper, I mean, kind of a GPP play for me uh, is that Seattle game, Deho Lee, uh, 3,400 against uh, Derek Holland. Lee's been red hot. I mean, hitting over 4, 500 of late. Uh, this season, 357 Wobo off lefties. And given kind of the fact that not a ton of people really know about him, you should catch him at, at you know, pretty low ownership, and he has big time upside. Definitely. Um, I think that's a good call. It's cheap, um, sort of a cheap alternative, and he, he's in a good matchup. He's in a good spot. So um, he's been hitting well, sort of four multi-hit games in his last four games. So um, I think we're looking at a solid option here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and if you're paying up kind of at both spots, um, you know, I don't mind him in, in cash games if you are rolling in area or – a NOLA together or something like that, not kind of going down to a call or Harvey at the SP2. Right. Uh, anyone else you like here? Not really. Um, I kind of gave Jose Abreu a quick look at his price. I think that's a little peculiar, but uh, ultimately I think um, he's just not – not in a perfect spot there. And I think Lee is a pretty solid option right around him. So I think you just kind of pivot onto that. Yeah. I mean, Abreu, I mean, it's gotten to that point this season where they, you know, they tempt you. I mean, he's been hitting better of late, but still not a ton of power this season. I mean, just yeah. six homers and that's been the problem, but uh, I don't mind taking a shot at him. I, I think because that price tag is so low, uh, he's worthy of kind of maybe a share or two in tournaments. Right, but again, um, the power hasn't been there, so it's kind of an awkward situation. And it's weird. It's like Verlander and him swap places a little bit. So um, I guess we're going going with Verlander for now. Yeah. Uh, looking at second base here, and uh, for me, I mean, Daniel Murphy kind of comes out as the top option of that top tier, uh, unless you're rolling with a Mariners stack or a Cubs stack. Um but you look at Moscow, I mean, small sample size, 427 will be allowed to lefties. Uh, and Murphy's just been on fire, and in that ballpark, I mean, he's kind of a, an easy pay-up option if you're going that route. Yeah, um, he struggled the last two games, but, I mean, you don't have to look back far to see him finding success. He's in a great matchup tonight, obviously. Uh, this Nationals team's going to gonna hit this Reds pitching eventually, right? <laughs> I would assume so, man. I mean, I I was expecting that, you know, to the first two games here, and it wasn't much. But mm. um, you kind of look at the process still. I mean, bad pitching, bad bullpen, great ballpark. Uh, I'll still have no yeah. problem rolling guys out there. Yeah, I, I think you just got to keep rolling with it. They're a great stacking option. And Murphy, uh, he's one of the best sort of high-priced options of the night. So you just kind of keep rolling with it for sure. Yeah, and I think – that you know. With that being said, it it seems like people might come off of them a little bit today uh, as far as ownership mm-hmm. wise. I mean, I still think they're going to have a bit of ownership to them, um, but maybe less so than than what they really should. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, Odor still at thirty eight hundred facing Iwakuma. Two hits last night in his return from the uh, the punch. Um, <laughs> I think he's a solid option at thirty eight hundred for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree. I like him a lot. And you are Kuma, I mean, a quality name guy, but in that ballpark, I mean, he doesn't pitch particularly well. So uh, I like this Rangers team. Yeah, and and they kept our boy in there, uh, Profar. So we'll see if he's in the lineup again today. But if he is, I mean, keep throwing him in there. Yeah, I mean, those are the two guys. I mean, that kind of takes a lot of guys out of play in that range. Um you know, because you could look at a Devin Travis as a come off kind of GPP option from a door, but at that point, a door and profile. I mean, those those guys could be, you know, decent value on today's slate yet again. That takes mm-hmm. a lot of guys that range out. Right, for sure. Um, I mean, he's been he's been awesome. So I think you just keep throwing it in there and hope hope the streak continues. Yeah, definitely. Um, one guy I'll kind of mention uh, if he's not in there. Um, it's Cesar Hernandez at 2,900. Uh, kind of another name against, you know, Peralta there hitting at the top of the order. 
Um, Paul timing allows a 368 wall but to lefty since 2014. Hernandez is not a big upside. I mean, barely hit his first homer yesterday. Um, you're not kind of expecting that out of him again. But, you know, I do think a 7 to 10 uh, DK score is possible for him on this slate with, with the runs that are about to be scored here. I'd say that's fair, Jason. That's a fair call. Yeah. I mean, my prediction system in my head is, <laughs> is worth it. I like it. Yeah, no, that's a good call. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that works out and how that lineup shakes out. But, yeah, I, I definitely like that. Yeah, that's definitely always the thing with the Phillies. I mean, you never know what you're going to get as far as lineup wise or, or where people yeah. are. Um, I, mean, I mean, it pretty pretty much defines kind of how we view them. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're all over the place. But he he's been actually pretty solid this year. Yeah, I mean, Vegas run total of five, so I think the Phillies are looking kind of like a, a pretty valuable offense there. Definitely. Uh, looking at third base, and you mentioned Chris Bryant kind of before, and uh, I'm on him as well, 5,100. I don't mind that price tag. Um, I mean, Cubs bats are really in play. I mean, Corbin, nothing special to really rave about there. 351 well, allowed to right. He's 1.39 home runs per nine. Uh, Cubs, I mean, all in play today. is a stack, and I think one-offs as well. Yeah, the top option there, it's kind of like, all right, who are you stacking with? Um, if you're going Seattle, you're obviously going Seager. If you're going Chicago, you're going Bryant. And then I think if you're just looking at one guy, I think you're leaning Bryant tonight over Seager. But um, either way, both good options. But but leaning Bryant here, I, I think the Cubs are are a great stack tonight. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think you look at Donaldson. I mean, if he's in the lineup, he he's worth a look against the lefty. I mean, always. Um, if he's not, I mean, that kind of makes things a little bit easier. Uh, also looking at Machado, I mean, I'm not a big fan of, of picking on Sabathia, actually, with a lot of these guys. Uh, I think well, there's two names in the outfield that I prefer, but uh, I'm not a big fan of Machado in today's matchup. No, and there's no need to pay that price, you know. Um, what do we think about your boy Jung Ho Kang? Oh, you set me up perfectly, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> You know, back-to-back -back games with a homer, I mean, obviously a, a third yeah. day in a row would be tough, but he's in a good spot to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, he's hit lefties well, 350 Wobe in his career, 225 ISO. And obviously Santiago has been, you know, right in that department, home run-wise, been horrible. 242 home runs per nine to righties this season. Um, and that's even in his ballpark of, of Angel Stadium that is favorable. So moving to PNC, it, it's not a big difference for me. Kang's shown power there. Uh, mm -hmm. 3700 I, I like that price tag quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, and an alternative to Machado in that range, Anthony Rendon, I think obviously kind of kind of goes along with that national stack, but I think Rendon at his price, it's kind of in a solid range where, where he kind of sticks out above um, sort of the other options I, I'm looking at there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, Michael Franco, I think GPP wise, I prefer uh, I prefer Kang kind of in all formats, but Michael Franco would be kind of be a come off uh, just because Peralta has been, you know, bored against right handers, four fifty eight wall above the season uh, to them. So Franco, I mean, kind of a reverse blitz guy there. I don't mind him at all. Yeah, I like that call. Um, it's I, I like paying up at this spot. I think. Um, I like that kind of range in the in the 4K range. That kind of I I think that's a good range. Um, Dietrich back in the lineup, but obviously struggling against a a Matt Harvey. That's going to be a tough matchup for him. Valencia, I kind of like McCullers, so um, eh, I don't think I'm going to be touching him either tonight. Yeah, and Travis Shaw, I mean, Travis Shaw struggled of late, but I think you look at him, I mean, he might have some home run upside in today's say against Estrada, which has been that that thing. I mean, obviously, kind of a strictly GPP play because the floor is a little bit lower, but 3,500, I mean, that's kind of a decent sort of option. Mm-hmm, definitely. And uh, so Corey Kluber has been not Corey Kluber this year. Are, are we looking at Royals as one-offs, or is it kind of just you just avoid the whole situation in general? I think, yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. It's, you know, I'm yeah. not a big fan of Kluber. I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of the Royals against. And it's just, yeah, it's one of those games where I'm, I mean, I'm staying away from that situation. He's been super awkward this year. It's kind of like, oh, Corey Clu Oh, Corey, what's going on, man? What happened to you? Again, dude? I told you not on the floor. <laughs> 
you just at this point you never know what you're gonna get from him and yeah I mean, he's been in such good spots before. I mean, you look back at the Houston Minnesota games, and you expect him to have big strikeout upside, and nothing. They were like two of his worst games of the year. I know he just got smashed. So, but I mean, obviously, he does have that upside, but it's just you can't really trust it right now. And there's just so much better options around him. So anyway, I, I think we're avoiding hitters against him, but at the same time, um, he's been shelled a few times this year. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, on the other side, I don't mind some of those Cleveland bats. I mean, we've kind of glossed over a lot of them, but yeah. guys like Kipnis, Young Gomes, I don't have a problem with them in kind of GPP formats. Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, looking at shortstop here, and uh, this is one where uh, I'm not a big fan of the top options. I think Carlos Correa at 3,600 is still where I'm looking at. I mean, Sonny Gray's coming off the DL there. Not quite sure if he's going to even turn it around, but, you know, you look at Gray, he's been awful this season. 425 will be allowed to righties, and Correa's starting to really heat up here. And, and uh, you know, he's kind of been underrated. I mean, still a 356 will against righties, uh, you know, ice over 200. So it's not like he's been bad. I, I just don't get the, the fact that you price him down at 36. But, hey, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at his raw stats, they're not that impressive. But um, dig a little deeper, and I think especially when you start to look at the recent production and sort of what he's done in the past few years, he's a great value right now. So I've been – I mean, I've just been kind of plugging him in automatically at short, even even over some better options – um, some higher priced options the last few days. And I think you just continue to do that until they put him, I mean, above 4K, right? Yeah. I mean, hell, make that 4,500. I mean, I'll yeah. still put him in at 43. Like, this is a yeah. guy who we saw, I mean, in that 5K range of times. And I mean, mm-hmm. one, I mean, obviously, three, chip, three triples in the last four games doesn't hurt. I mean, he's, he's cruising right now. It, and it's always nice to get cheap exposure to the Astros. Like you don't necessarily, like you mentioned, like paying that 5K for Altuve or 5,300 for Springer. But I mean, if you can get a Correa, um, that's nice cheap exposure to a solid um, heart of the lineup. So I, I definitely like that. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that just kind of puts a lot of guys out of play for me. I mean, uh, now looking at like a Brad Miller, I think Bogart's in the righty righty matchup. Certainly in play if in a Red Sox stack, but those one offs up top, I'm not really a fan of because Correa is so yeah. cheap. Not not touching Villar against Nola and Lindor. That's just that seems expensive to me. Obviously, home run upside against Young, but um, he's more of a tournament play to be different than an actual good play. <laughs> Yeah, I think price can if he was down below, you know, forty three hundred, forty two hundred, I mm-hmm. yeah, it would be an easier process to, to kind of make him like Lindor a bit more. But yeah, I agree. I think the price tag's a little heavier than you'd like it to be. Mm-hmm. Uh two guys, I mean obviously pro far, I mean still shortstop eligible if you need to somehow save that extra four hundred. Um if you're looking to really be different, another Cubs bat, Javier Bays. Um it's a guy I'm looking at just because uh, you can be a little bit different. He's kind of cut the strikeout rate down quite a bit this year. Uh, obviously, a small sample size, but a wobo over 500 uh, against yeah. lefties. So. <laughs> hey, that's that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that's not too shabby. I mean, <laughs> I think he's kind of an intriguing option uh, if you want mm. to be different. And exactly being different there in a tournament would be very sneaky. Or in a cub stack, Um He's right next to Profar, so I think people are just going to go right onto that. I, Profar was 50% owned um, in some of the tournaments I saw last night. So um, if you can do that, I think Profar is going to rip away quite a bit of ownership percentage. And in terms of that uh, Cub stack, I, I think that's an interesting way to get exposure as long as you have the top options as well. But, I mean, we see it in tournaments all the time where – if you just throw in one of those deeper guys in the order and they, they go off, you're in a great spot to potentially take down a tournament. Yeah, and that's the thing with like this Cubs offense, this Red Sox offense, is they hit so often and all the way through their lineups that guys hitting 7th, 8th, and ninth are going to see possibly four at-bats a game. And, and I think you kind all of right. feel a little bit more comfortable. It's not like Houston where uh, maybe you take mm. a – 
a Tyler White down low, and it's like, okay, if they don't go all the way through, they're only scoring <laughs> three, four runs. It's like you're not going to get that fourth and that in. Yeah, they're not even getting on base some days, so they're just striking out, not even getting the bat on the ball. So, yeah, that's definitely a good example. You go one through five on the Astros and and uh, don't think about it if you're stacking, you know? Yeah, because it's a different story if you want to be different. Right, for sure. Looking at outfield here, and there's a lot of guys up top that I like, um, but I also think you kind of have some interesting, you know, tier two options that are in the same, same matchup. I mean, like guys like Nelson Cruz and Mark Trumbo, both expensive, but you can get Mark. an Adam Jones and you can get a Franklin Gutierrez in the same spot. Like they're, Mark, they're the come off Mark, plays. Mark Trumbo is a monster. What? He's right next to Trout. I mean, remember when they were in the same lineup together? Uh, it's just, it's just amazing what he's doing right now on the streak. But, um, is he just going to hit a home run every night? Is that, is that how we do things now? Or, Hey, that's, yeah. I mean, (laughs) that's the process right now. I mean, he's one, he gets the lefties in Camden yards and uh, I hate the price tag, but it's awful. He's justified it. So it's kind of like, it's, it's a pure GPP play for me. I, I can't quite pay up that in cash games. No, because you are paying up on the hill in cash. And again, I think once once you see guys get into different tiers, it kind of is it's a reality check. Like, okay, am I really going to play Trumbo over Chris Bryant tonight, who's also in a good spot? No. Um, So it's definitely shifting there. Um, But I mean, I like Bryce Harper at five as well. So those are the kind of the two guys I'm looking at in that 5k range if I'm going to pay up. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I mean, there's a lot of guys you can kind of work with and it kind of just thinks, you know, maybe you look at correlation plays, you look at mini stacks, you look at, you know, where you want that exposure to because like guys like Nelson Cruz, as you mentioned, Harper, Fowler, I like a lot. But Marte 4700, they're all kind of expensive, but they all yeah. also have kind of guys that you can drop down to and, and that are just not quite that name hold that, that isn't that bad. And I think it's a viable option to sort of get some cheaper pitching tonight and, and pay up for some of these bats because there, there's a solid amount of decent spots here um, for the high-priced guys. So um, I, I think that's kind of what you're looking at here. I, I'm not afraid of paying up um, for sure at outfield tonight. Yeah. Uh, coming down a little bit, though, I mean, I do like a lot in that Tier 2 range. Uh, you know, Dubal Herrera is probably one of my favorite outfielders on the slate at 4,100 against Peralta. Uh, very kind of overlooked. Um, you look at, at Herrera, 4-1 Woba against right-handers this season, 153 WRC+. plus. At that price, like, I mean, in a, in a Phillies run total of five, uh, I don't know, he's just one of the guys I'm just going to be consistently plugging away in my lineups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I like I like that call. Um, he's he's been pretty consistent, and I mean he's in. We'll we'll see where he is in the order again, but he's been pretty high, and he's been hitting well. So that matchup considered, I, I think that's a really solid option. Um, Mazzara, I think the power against Iwakuma. He's only thirty nine hundred. That's a good way to sort of chip away at the top options there. Yeah, definitely. And I was kind of speaking of the come down options. Um, I mean, you got Adam Jones at 4K starting to heat up again. His hit lefties well in the past. Uh, would be kind of that, that tier two to, to Trouble's tier one. And McCutcheon at 4K, I mean, obviously McCutcheon hasn't really been himself this year, but at 4K against a bad lefty is still something that's that's in play to me. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Um, Rajai Davis, I think, again, we're looking for those cheap bats in Cleveland's order. So I, I'm, I'm definitely looking at him. Hopefully he can have a little renaissance here of, of what he did a few weeks ago. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Seattle, I mean, Franklin Gutierrez, I mean, once again, I kind of the tier two to Cruz is tier one uh, as far as the price mm-hmm. goes. But, I mean, really in a similar spot, and you look at Gutierrez, uh, I mean, on a tear of late, um, 384 Woba against lefties, ISO over 200. And that's not a bad price tag in that ballpark. And uh, a 5.5 run total there for Seattle. So I think really it's, it's pretty intriguing with a lot of those right-handed bats. Yeah, um, that's that's a solid option there for sure. Um, are we looking at Houston bats here against Gray? Are we targeting Gray? Because uh, there's some so. decent prices here. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, how can you not? I mean, it's not like he's – I mean, he went to the DL. There was been no things that he fixed anything. It's just he was hurt. So I, I think you kind of look at this and go, he's been so bad for, you know, a month and a half this year. And these Houston bats, they're, they're cheaper. And I think you kind of look at him and feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I think I, a guy that I was looking at is Evan Gaddis here, 3300 Colby Rasmus, 3K. Uh, that's super cheap. So you don't even necessarily have to stack those with a full Astros lineup. But um, as I mentioned before, that one through five for them is kind of where all the runs come from. Um, so those two are intriguing to me. Yeah, I like that call. And, and I think at those prices, even if Gray does turn out a, a better than normal start, you know, it's not a, a huge – price you know cut into your lives like a springer would be or an altuve would be if you're only getting five to seven points from springer it's like okay it's a little rough for an altuve you feel mm-hmm. a bit more comfortable with with gaddis correa on uh, that that price tier right and i i wouldn't play him tonight but camera may have been still batting over 400 so good ma- good on you buddy <laughs> the maven alert <laughs> definitely uh, one Baltimore kind of tier three guy I'm taking a look at, Nolan Weimold. Uh, if you need kind of a, a punt option there, uh, 3,100. Uh, I like him quite a bit here. I mean, he's kind of a sneaky guy against lefties. I mean, 355 Woba, 176 ISO. Um, I like Trumbo, Adam Jones, and him. I'm not really on a lot of the guys like Chris Davis or Manny Machado uh, in the matchup, and I'm not going heavy on the Baltimore exposure, but I think one offs there is certainly in play for me. Yeah, unless Joey Rickard comes in and, like, stabs him during the pregame so he can get the start. But, yeah, (laughs) um, (laughs) I think that's a good call in terms of a one-off. That's relatively cheap. But, um, I mean, these are some decent options in the the mid to low range as well. So I I think you can look there too. Um, But you don't necessarily need to punt the position either. Yeah, I definitely agree, and I, I think that just kind of shows how deep outfield is. I mean, you can kind of go yeah. a variety of ways and, and feel pretty comfortable about it. Mm-hmm. Let's go wrap things up here with the DraftKings Daily Trot. Be sure to check out the DailyFantasyCafe.com for all our great tools and content.